Don't laugh. Google laughed. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> I heard a snort, and I couldn't keep uh, <laughs> keep doing what I was doing, whatever it was we were doing. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, but <laughs> yeah, I think the term entertainment you can, you is being rewind and saw why people were laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> And we just lost everybody. All right. No, um, look what I can do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Click. What's next? Uh, I'm Darren with Arbitrage Trade, and this is After the Bell, and it is After the Bell on Wednesday. So take that into consideration. Anything we say from this point on is that it happened on Wednesday. And my yes. guests are on, the, on your right is Daniel Hopwood, top right. And uh, he is an ex-institutional wealth manager from someone I really love. I love that company so much. And then we have Josh Morgan, a.k.a. J.P. Morgan, a.k.a. the banker who's waving. And he's down in the bottom left. And then bottom right, that leaves our boss, our guru. Uh, his name is Royce Wells and the inventor of indicators and algorithms for arbitrage and pips. Uh, maybe we'll have a plush out there soon you can buy. Uh, <laughs> right, merch. We can make merch. That's right. Merch. Merch. We got merch. swag, as they say. Yes, right. Dude, we should swag. totally do that. <laughs> so right. who am I? I am Darren. I am uh, in my parents' basement. I am dumb money. I am uh, an ape, a dumb ape, and I throw poo at people who don't agree with me. So let's go on to the disclosure. When none of us are financial advisors, and this is not financial advice. The information provided is solely for informational and educational purposes. And uh, sometimes you know, just take it however you want. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Please always consult an investment professional before making any financial decisions or just let an algorithm do it for you. And we right. can tell you about that <laughs> at arbitragetrade.com. All right. So segments, we're going to talk about the tail of the tape. Uh, this is a agenda that kind of just grew, especially today, because a lot of things happened today. And, um, Rather than me say it, I want I want the millennial to say it. What the what the first part that we're going to talk about is what it's titled. So Daniel, what is it titled? We are so not back. Ah, he yeah. added a so. <laughs> he added a so not back. Thank you for that addition. Hey, All right, the Spider Man movie. I'm back. <laughs> My I mean, so I mean, back. at this rate, who knows? <laughs> Next week we could be back again. <laughs> we are so not back. <laughs> to be determined. They say, can, can we have two weeks in a row of this title, just like we did two weeks in a row of the last title of "We Are So Back"? Um, okay, so what happened? What happened, Daniel? You can start us off. Uh, why are you saying that we are so not back? I mean, you know, was it yesterday? The S and P dropped. Um, almost 3%, not quite, a little over two and a half from its recent highs and all the other indices were down um, and, you know, looked into it a little bit. And it appears that September historically is the worst month of the year. Um, and that aligned pretty well with it uh, starting to be September. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're kind of, kind of just fit, fitting <laughs> our uh, standard narrative. Oh, so it's just a narrative. It's just an algorithm that we do every year. Uh, it has nothing to do with anything else other than just it's the robots. Is that what you're saying? Nah. It appears to be part of it. That's what that's what they're telling us. That's what they're saying. Okay. In my uh, my WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, your bubble. I mean, uh, no. Um, the uh, Dow was down just. I mean, today that that all happened yesterday. This is Wednesday. Today it was just. It could make up its mind. It's basically in a wait and see mode. I think. Uh, the Dow uh, was just a little bit up, and the S&P and the NASDAQ were just a little bit down. And pretty much we have a Friday uh, unemployment report, which I think is what everybody's waiting for, because supposedly that is what the Fed is now putting all their their balls into, I guess, is what we'll say. And Eggs. Uh, <laughs> eggs. eggs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They're both sort of round. I don't know. Uh, moving right <laughs> on. <laughs> Different channel. <laughs> Different channel. Uh, another thing that happened today is the yield curve, or actually it happened within the last 24 hours, I should say. Uh, it basically re, or what would you say? I guess the term is uninverted state. Uninverted. Um, it did not yeah. uninvert yet, but it's very close. 
Yeah, I thought it did actually cross over and then went back down again. I don't know. It's it's in that almost to the what they call normal state uh, for the two year and the ten year, uh, and we'll see if that sticks uh, going through to Friday. Um, anything to say about that, Royce? As far as uh, if you want to approach the camera from your Never. Way, way back there, <laughs> I like the background. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> we do too. All right, Royce. Fire. Royce will be doing the rest of the program. I'll see you know. All right. Um, so All I right. mean, yield yield curve getting back to quote normal. Um, I mean, there's some history behind this happening before. What 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 might be happening now? Do you think? Well, from my perspective, or mm -hmm. basically historically, when it inverts, that usually means we're going into a recession. So the fact that it's trying to normalize itself, that means we may be coming out of a recession that no one talked about. And can we go up? How, how do you get out of a recession that no one talks about? Just keep throwing money at it. If you keep throwing money at it, basically, uh, things are working just like with World War II. Um, basically, how we got out of the, the Great Depression, they start throwing money at it. They put people to work. They, they've got things that basically, if you can basically outproduce, raise your GDP, and basically push really hard, you can get out of a recession. So... Maybe that's what the Fed was doing. Maybe that's why they uh, haven't uh, done any cuts so far this year. They've been pushing really hard to get there. Business yeah, to have an excuse to get there, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. right. The UK actually did come. Or they're saying they're coming out of a recession. They actually admitted they had one. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see uh, as far as dominoes either being pushed back up or falling down. Either way, so I do think historically, though, that there has been uh, it's it's a lag effect, right? That when it actually things get go into recession after it reinverts, is that three to, Daniel? Did you say something months. about that? Three to six months after, so everything mm -hmm. seems to be. I mean, it's, it's like last year they said that well, eh, recession might be in twenty twenty four. And then all year this year, they're saying, yeah, 2025, you know, after the election, everything, then everything will get there. Well, there are some reports that are showing that. I mean, if you look at the that bank term fund lending program that happened, uh, it hits its peak, uh, which was supposed to be only 25 billion, by the way, for, for these banks that used it. Um, but it actually went all the way up to, oh, geez, um, 125 billion or some crazy number like that. Well, so five times in the lot. Wait, wait. It's, it's, I think it's even more than that, but it, it went way over. And that actually comes due because everything is due a year later from when they actually took the loan. Uh, that comes to the big top part of it uh, becomes due January 2025. Imagine that. Okay. So, <laughs> and Not of course, it did that end. 2008 started in January, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, did it really? Yep. January the 8th of wow. 2008. The more things change, the more things stay the same. All right. Speaking of bankers, since this is your property, what, what are we talking about there, JP Morgan? Oh, no. I mean, I was going to mention the, that yield curve, but um, you're really, I think yeah. it's just from a, per, per, you know, from a perspective standpoint, from what people are hearing and, and, re, and, and just the reaction to what have happened so far. I mean, you got coming back off the NVIDIA situation and then you've got the it was the first of the month on september and september's are typically really bad and you add that at, all into the noise and everything that's going on with the like the emergence kind of what we've been saying the past couple of weeks is we're seeing a little bit more of the emergence of that hard landing again not so much the soft landing that we thought we were going to get now kind of the numbers have shifted a little bit with some of the different job reports and economic slowing and all the manufacturing news, yeah news and noise that we've been hearing and mm -hmm. just kind of a, a perfect storm of crap that happened on tuesday um and yeah it, it, things took a turn for the worse but even more in more interesting is that we did not really see that strong bounce that we did like off the big dip back in august so that to me seems to be a little bit more telling yeah, yeah. Um, timing and, and, and what reports are coming out. Maybe they're saving it for that. Who knows? Um, we, we, we don't know until they actually do it, till they pull the levers, till the algos actually do their thing. <laughs> so uh, the other thing that came out this week was Warren Buffett. Uh, he, he, speaking of, you know, the entire stock market, he gives the warning that uh, be ready for any stock to go down half, basically. 
So um, mm. th- that for him to say that, that's a. Uh, of course, we all know that when it becomes news, it's to manipulate something that has already happened usually. So it'll be interesting to see what that means uh, coming up. Uh, if he's telling the truth and that maybe because he owns so much of stuff, he's going to take it down 50 <laughs> percent like he seems to be doing now with the uh, Bank of America. He, he keeps taking uh, Bank of America shares and selling the crap out of them. Um, w- yeah, which kind of tells you something there, too. And he's and we'll talk about this later, but he's jacking up. Uh, what he's investing in uh, some energy stocks. It's weird. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, more for uh, an energy source that's not really proven yet. But uh, anyway, let's anything else on this that want do you guys want to throw in there? I think we kind of talked it to death. Let's go on to uh, we just talked about it dropping 50 percent. I don't think NVIDIA has, but it might be on the way there. Um, Remember, I said it, 58 dollars when you see it. <laughs> Just that would be more than it. half from when you said it, for $58. sure. <laughs> $58. Come on. <laughs> Roy said it here. Yes, he did. Go back and look at past 58 episodes. 58 and the cryptocurrency <laughs> bubble. <laughs> and and their, their earnings just weren't as spectacular, if I can use that word, as, uh, I mean, they still were, quote, good, but they weren't, you know, NVIDIA, when you're at that high of a value, you better start being spectacular on all your earning reports. And that just didn't happen. Plus, there's a big... Um, I guess that whole industry now is is starting to be questioned. Imagine that. Uh, when we started talking about how it was overvalued for so long, I mean, we've said that here, that it's, it's just overpumped. And now they're admitting, oh, well, yeah, probably, you know, the values, values are a little strong. Um, and so it's still the seven that's holding up the stock market. But now they're trying to say that it's going to move into the 493 and, I'm sorry. I just still don't see it. It's still being held up by those seven because they'll take it down and they'll start putting it into the other stocks and then they'll move it right back into when they start getting in trouble, they'll move it right back into those seven. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, the um, Did you have anything else you want to say about NVIDIA, though? I mean, we, we do talk about it every week. Anything else about NVIDIA besides the fact you said it was going to happen? <laughs> and oh, it may be on its way oh. to happening. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, um, looking at AMD chips and Intel chips as well, basically, right. the, there's, there's all, the, like I said, the, the charts are telling. And right now, charts are saying that basically everyone um, and those, at least in that sector, are currently going down. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see if it holds up. We'll see if it holds up. Well, uh, I think, Dan, you said something about um, it's just and the way I see it is there's got to be a bang for the buck on AI, right? I mean, we can broaden this out to just AI. Um, it's it's a concept, but it's not really returning money yet. And if people aren't actually putting it's, uh, monetization, I guess is the word I should use. Uh, the end monetization part is people are now saying, wait a minute, let's just show me the money. Uh, yeah. we, we, we put all this money into building it out, but now we want to see how company X Yep. in general, is going to monetize this and bring money back into the company so that we can justify all the money that we've spent getting to that point. So uh, isn't that where we are now? Just show me yeah, the money. I, I think other than, um, you know, a firm, I can't think I'm aware of any large company that's has fully implemented AI and seen a large difference in their, you know, bottom line, whether that's them generating more revenue or saving more money. Um, but, you know, I think, I forget what the exact numbers are, but a firm's like hot fire, like 20% of their company because they're, you know, replaced with AI, which is like, even if it's just customer service roles and whatnot, like that's pretty insane and impressive from like an implementation standpoint. Um, and, you know, I think, they're, you know, a company like, uh, I'm sure you guys have seen, you know, all the meta platforms have integrated AI. I'm not really sure what that does for my Instagram, but it'll probably, you know, help them, you know, better service ads and generate revenue in the future. Um, especially, you know, after they've uh, started to rebound after that I, um, iOS update. So, yeah, I, I think, okay. you know, there's insane spend on these chips. Um and very little real world implication for the average company so far. Um, so probably, you know, we're probably like five years early. Oh, something else that's out there in the future, but we'll go ahead and pump the stock market up now 
And then once it actually happens, we'll pump it up again, right? I think that's the way it works. I mean, think about it. In, everything know, works. What you have, you have the dot com <laughs> bubble of the two thousands, and it took fifteen years for anything truly relevant to like kind of come out of Web two point depending on you know how you look at it. <laughs> it's amazing what they come up with in those brainstorming sessions, right? Um, so, uh, what we're we gonna talk about here? The um, I feel like Josh's comments, I saw a lot of head shakes. Well, no, I mean, I just think, like, yeah, I mean, I, I get it, but, you know, and I, I know this is no-no phrase, but looking outside of the charts, like, there are a couple of things that came out of the NVIDIA earnings that were troubling that, that you know, not really the catchy headlines. And it, some of it is, yeah, we, it's, it's a, I mean, it, it, NVIDIA has been up 3,000% over the past five years. That's absolutely stupid growth that three trillion dollar valuation yeah i mean you've seen all that but they yeah they blew expectations out of the water but they've been ramping up so rapidly that this is the first time we've seen kind of a little bit of a slowdown then you've got people on the conference call talking about how like there's blackwell you know delays in the blackwell there's like supply chain issues and they like are, mm -hmm. they can't produce that they can't meet demands. And if you think about that, it's kind of a paradox because they are actually buying or their major um, consumers of these AI chips are the same companies that are also trying to produce their own chips in house. Like they're trying to create their own silicon. And so if they can't get it, what they need from NVIDIA, it's only going to accelerate the rate that they're going to need to to rely on their own chip. So it's just going to push that and advance that further faster. And I think that's kind of one of the things that, you know, the subtext from a, a lot of people's reaction to that NVIDIA, uh, you know, the, the downturn that happened yesterday and today, really. Yeah, and you throw in now the uh, Department of Justice is now looking into uh, NVIDIA and them encouraging people to not look and seek for other chips uh and however they did that so that's what they're looking into to to see if they were steering people just to their product sort of like google's thing you know just use us uh for search they're kind of now looking at nvidia uh in a similar way of saying just use our chips uh however it is that they did that uh that's what they're investigating right now so We'll see. It could be just time that the algorithm is supposed to take the product, the uh, price down. So we'll throw in this DOJ investigation to make sure it gets there, right? Which we, which is first, the news or the or the algorithm? <laughs> but we talk about that over and over again here. <laughs> I will bring that up again. Um, oh yes. Yeah, sure. yeah, I will. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to uh, to Ford. <laughs> just every week, uh, Ford. Uh, so the the title here is Ford went broke or went woke then broke, uh, but will it make it back? So uh, what we're talking about here is, is it DEI that you're talking about? Yep. All right, Daniel, you want to talk a little bit about that? And um, try not to get yeah. us canceled. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I said, try not to get us canceled. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I'm just reporting the headline. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> And I actually did a little looking into this, like from like right. more a right. data standpoint um, is kind of mm -hmm. interesting. But so on, um, I think it was last Wednesday, Ford came out with a memo saying that they're, they're going to have a fresh look at their DEI program. Um, and they're pretty much cutting them along with all similar programs. You know, they currently rank on a human rights index and, you know, take stances on, you know, kind of touching the political third rail and they're going to kind of stop doing all that after a lot of, you know, blowback they've had. And we've seen this year alone, um, you know, pretty big name companies, but in my opinion, not all too surprising in the category they sit of pulling out of their DEI initiative, Tractor Supply Co, John Deere, Harley, Lowe's have all dropped their DEI programs as well. Um, and, you know, we, I titled this Ford went, woke than broke because you know there's a saying go broke or go woke go broke but when you look into the actual <laughs> data of a lot of the companies that go woke and go broke there's no like direct statistical correlation to them it's like 
There's some that have a pop initially and then go lower. There's some that go lower and then go up. But a lot of the companies haven't seen like, um, you know, all the ones that have a DEI program or something along those lines have all plummeted since then. Um, but, you know, I, I did find it interesting that so many companies are kind of pulling out of this initiative. And I wanted to flip it to you guys is why, why are these companies so bad at implementing these things? Because none of these are like bad things, I don't think anyone would say. But obviously, they kind of always end up like affecting these companies, get super political. You know, you think of Disney, Bud Light kind of thing. It goes really bad. But, you know, flip side, Google is a very, we'll say, progressive company. And they've done really well. Um, so, you know, I'd love to hear your guys' take. Well, I've done a little bit before I pass it on. Uh, and I'll do the interception here. But uh, it's I've done a little bit of looking into it ever since the uh, the new Green Deal from AOC was brought out. So I've, I've had a lot of time to look at all of this because that stands for diversity, inclusion, uh, is, is the E environment or equity, right? Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Diversity, so, equity, and inclusion, yeah. Right, okay. Um, the, what's happened is people have to create a whole other program within their company. And so it's kind of like the government. You have to, let's, let's start something. So let's create a whole other wing over here that's gonna cost us money. <laughs> <laughs> and if, if they don't feel they're getting direct, some of these companies, if they're not getting a direct increase in, or, or let's say increase in their investment, return on investment, uh, then they're, they're just saying, well, let's just, I mean, we were doing this and this and this as a company before. Uh, let's just make sure we do it better, I guess, and not have a whole program specific to these steps that have been told that we need to follow uh, and, and, and cost us more money. Uh, from a personnel standpoint. That's my take on it. Uh, I don't think it is political. I think that's what they're trying to do is not be as political. So, cause you have people, anything you, as you know, if you, if you introduce it anywhere, you're going to have people who like it and who don't like it. And you're going to, you're going to have people not want to shop where you are because of this. And you'll have people who want to shop where you are because of this. So it's just a numbers game eventually. And I think that's just what it is. It's just like, let's don't create any more expense to our company and we will still and they always say this we will still look into this diversity inclusion and equity we just won't have to follow specific these one through ten or whatever it is that is trying to be implemented and and you're not following it and you're not your score is not going to be as good if you don't specifically do these 10 steps so that's my take. Darren, <laughs> on the on the flip side of that i'll just give like a small anecdote when i was at goldman um <clears throat> as you know kind of like the younger advisor cohort we were you know shown a lot of stuff about like um esg products and like we weren't necessarily like supposed to push them or anything like that but it was kind of like hey like make sure you know the clients are kind of aware you're the younger younger cohort you know younger people are going to care about that in the future blah 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 and i asked a client one time i was like oh like you know do you ever think about like you know adding this kind of stuff to your portfolio and he goes listen, man, I got bills to pay. He goes, if that stuff has a better return than what I'm currently in, sure, I'm interested, but I haven't seen anything that shows me it's gonna have a better return. So I'm not right. interested. He's like, I got right, two right, kids. Right. He's like, I got a lifestyle. He's like, he's like, that's what I'm worried about. I was like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> like, this, this, enough. Like, I mean, it does tie in because that's the environmental, right? ESG is the environmental, mm -hmm. the green. Yep. Um, and you're talking about Ford here and Ford's already having to deal with the fact that they've had been forced almost pushed into by 2030, having all of their vehicles, you know, uh, uh, EVs. And there's been a big drawback on that now. Uh, and because it costs so much to get to that point uh, and people just aren't buying it like they wanted them to, then they tried the hybrid thing. Now they're still trying that. <laughs> to push that so it's just a matter of hey it's it's supply and demand here in the u.s at least and you're not going to have a government that's going to force it uh on, like an agenda so to speak that we're all have to be at x by 2030 um so that's what i'm talking about with the, the, the whole green new sure? deal <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think the wef and the green new deal are tied very closely together by 2030 that's why you keep seeing uh, end dates of 2030 of things being implemented. 
you know, you always see that. And that's that's what Davos every year. They come together and all the corporate CEOs and, and the leaders of the of I the thought world that's when that together. Mayan calendar ended. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the end of the world. If we if we get to 2030, oh, oh, yeah, it, right. yeah, if we get to 2030, it, it might be the end of my world because I'll be like, I just give I'll, up. I'll just... tell you, <laughs> depending on what news source you read, it feels like it's coming up. That's right. Yeah. I just want to see the first corporate Congress come out of here, like where Ooh. companies become big enough to, to get voting rights like countries. Yeah, they, it's not official, but I think it happens. I was uh, gonna say, I think so, that's already a thing, practically. I mean, uh, like that, I said, yeah. when they did the meeting and w, they did the World Economic Forum, when they that get is together, mostly that's how they're it voting works on already. It. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> make it official. I mean, make it official. <laughs> Might as well. Have I mean, you got, we're all. Have you guys seen the meme of like um, people in Congress when it's like if they. Um, dressed like NASCAR drivers and it has them like a right. fake NASCAR <laughs> suit and it says like yeah. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, <laughs> like Black Rock. <laughs> it's got like all their sponsors on it. It's hilarious. They really should. They really should. <laughs> all right, Banker, anything to throw in here before we move on? Give you a chance to throw your uh, your uh, your ESG. I mean, yeah, it, like it makes sense why they're pushing back. Like it, it's and it's a lot of what you've already a lot of what y'all have covered already, but it to me, it's kind of like the public opinion has, on that whole initiative. It's kind of shifted. You're looking at, and especially with those particular companies and that particular consumer base. Right. That, I mean, that opinion barely existed to begin with. The opinion was coming from outside and up. And so they were kind of forced to do something they didn't want to do in the in any way. So it makes sense why they're not going to try overly hard to implement these things in a way that might actually work i mean I, and if they're viewing it as fundamentally flawed then and their consumer base is viewing it as fundamentally flawed like they have very little incentive other than like you said the, that list of 10 rules that they have to follow they're going to follow it and no more and it makes sense yeah, exactly like, exactly yeah. Yeah, like some of your best employees with the attendance policy, right? They're going to follow it right to the mm -hmm. edge. Much uh, as they yeah, right to the edge. <laughs> well, the question, is it DEI or DIE? DEI. -E okay. Whew. I'm like, -E why I'm like, <laughs> that, they named something die. That, that doesn't seem like they want it. Like, I, was, I was about to say, I'm like, man, Royce is really looking for the end of the world. That huh? was the yeah. draft before they decided. <laughs> they changed it from die to like, yeah. Oh, companies are going to adopt this and they're going to die. They're like, wait, wait, we can't have that. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how they how interpret it. Company? Put this in. It. It'll die. <laughs> Honestly, I think it was almost like an experiment. See how far we can push this. Uh, because, I mean, you could see, I could see a link between that being fully run 100 percent. And then we're not going to fund you for this and this from the government unless you follow these 10. I mean, it gets pretty it gets getting dangerously close to. Uh, socialism Darren, I'm I'm surprised you didn't bring in the um, conspiracy theory of that it's all made up by BlackRock to sell more products. Now that's ESG. I mean, they were all over that for sure. W, I, mean, I mean, the the ESG filter is just the economic filter of DEI for companies of how they get traded, right? Uh, what? Because <laughs> because <laughs> programs. Uh, e e but no, no, no. ESG is environmental social good. So like a lot of the things that yeah, correlate with DEI right. all fall into it. Yeah. Like, I've never seen, yeah. maybe I'm wrong, but I've never seen like any DEI, like ETFs, right? It's always ESG stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, BlackRock is way, I mean, they were really heavy into it. Larry Fink was really heavy into it to where he finally had to say, okay, maybe this isn't such a big deal. I mean, but and, he's the and same he guy. That's, he's into Bitcoin now. So. He did shift. But as far as we know, <laughs> yeah, I haven't looked at I haven't looked at every one of his filings, but I'll bet he's still got a ton of money in it. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, in so Bitcoin, next, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin, is it 58 now? Isn't that where we're yeah, at? 58 ish? So. I mean, don't want to talk about it. Right? Yeah, he doesn't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about yeah, it possibly going to. 58,000. It's looking beautiful over here. Royce, was it something you said about 40? Didn't you say 40K? Uh, about 40, yeah. Okay. Time to buy more. <laughs> buy the dip you sound like you can work on cnbc all mm -hmm. right uh job reports and rate cuts let's move on to that uh we kind of touch it i mean that's what happens when we roll down this list is some of the stuff we touch ahead of time uh but rate cuts uh, i think i looked up 
Reuters is saying three twenty fives or in whatever combination by the end of the year we will be 0.75 uh, of a cut. Um, as I've said before, I think it doesn't matter. It could be one, it could be one and a half, but it, it is not, not going to do one. <laughs> Or yeah, one. no, I'm just talking by the end of the by the end of the year. Yeah, two fifty. Oh, okay. yeah. okay. That's what I mean. Hard slam on the brakes. Yeah, two fifties. That'd um, be ridiculous. They've walked back. Uh the, the, it was almost a surety that you know it's gonna be 0. 0.5 or the, at least it was over 50 percent, and now they're walking that back to 0. 0.25. So I mean, who knows? It's all just a uh it's just another way to in my quote jawbone the market, I think, uh until it's it actually point happens. One. Point one. Just a yeah. point one. <laughs> But my point is, it's not going. It's a lag effect, I and mean, it's going to take a while for for anything like this to take effect. So they're going to play it. I think they already have. Uh, they've already built in all these cuts into the the market, so to speak. So maybe that's why we're seeing a move down now, is because they're thinking it's not going to happen as quickly. Um, don't know, but again, it's it's a lag effect thing, right, Royce? I mean, it, it, you can put in cuts now. Um, yeah, and but and it's not going to take effect till six months from now, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Economists have that that's the hardest job for an economist. Um, typically, when they're making their predictions, basically, they take all the data that they can assess, pull it all together. And then when they give you that information, that information is good for about six months. And basically, if they're right. if they're really close, they get really close to the projection. If they're not, then it goes completely sideways. And basically, they have to reassess, take more data in and give the next thing that they can do. Right. Because there are always unknowns. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But all the Worth money's the changes. The yeah. action's already been taken in the market uh, before they start selling their wares, so to speak, uh, to people on CNBC. That it's All that stuff's already been put into play uh, for the whatever price cuts they figured was going to happen. And then it's funny because once it does happen, then they go, oh, look, we just cut. It may already be worked into the market, but look, we still need you to buy more. So that's just kind of the way it works. It's a double dip. Uh, as I've said before, um, uh, let's go on to commercial mortgage bonds. <laughs> That's one of the ones I added into there because, and it's also one of my uh, three things, but you don't have really a whole lot of time in that one minute to, to, to talk about it. Um, but I will just kind of give you the details on this one. Uh, United Capitals, John Devaney says the commercial bond market is in serious trouble. Dramatic pause. A uh, particular, in <laughs> uh, particular interest um, are the office spaces, which, I mean, we've talked about that, CRE, oh, yeah. I mean, at length for, for the last, I don't know, since we've been doing this, I think. But um, And those are, when we're talking about those, we're talking about hotels, offices, malls. Um, mm -hmm. Ever since everybody from the pandemic moved away from these offices uh, or, or pared down how much office space they had, there's a problem out there especially in these big cities uh, like Chicago, Denver, L.A., San Francisco, Philadelphia, other places uh, that have big, tall buildings. <laughs> those seem to be hit the most. I mean, we moved out of a, of a taller building um, yep. and it's, it's about occupancy. And now these guys have borrowed money to fund those buildings and they're having to sell them for pennies on the dollar. And it's it, this reminds me of what happened in China. But now it seems like uh, there's starting to be some evidence. They're finally admitting some evidence about the uh, commercial bond market. So um, any comments on that? I mean, we, it, it, it really right. feels a lot like, like I've said before, it feels like 2008-ish, but in a different way. <laughs> yeah. Want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. All Go right. Go ahead. So um, a lot of the shifting, like basically, like, um, like you said, we moved out of a high-rise building. Right. And typically in commercial real estate, you have like a, a three, five, sometimes even seven right. year lease that you're right. basically in. Mm -hmm. And when those leases come due, like, for example, I know like AutoZone downtown, the city gave AutoZone a huge discount on the gold. I think it was Goldman. Uh, Go Smiths was the name of the building. It was Go Smiths downtown. And they basically gave me a huge tax cut to be down there. But everyone working from home now, basically, all of the incentives like um, it, on on their balance sheet, it's actually cheaper for them to lease than actually own the building, because it comes from a different money bucket, right? 
So as these things are coming up, they're like, well, if we don't have the occupancy, why would we do that? And so a lot of them are doing that, which is causing basically the, the, the owners of this property to scramble and say, um, can we make this a high rise? Can we make this apartments? Can we make this something else that would basically be beneficial if we don't make it something else? Then basically we're now on the hook to still pay MLGW and all of the other municipalities and we don't have revenue coming in and no one wants that. You don't want vacancies and especially in commercial real estate. <clears throat> so this they are basically uh it's it, it comes down to the banks versus the occupants right i mean or, or the owners yeah. of the building and yeah, the it, owners it, of the building versus the occupancy so that basically some people are going to have to get real creative mm -hmm. and real soon but i i actually kind of like this scenario because this also pushes us back to and i'm going to say it back to the 80s where most people like most apartment buildings were not standalone buildings they were high-rises Right. And so basically we shifted away from that. So we might be going back. That may be a way to lower the rent because basically now you have all this extra supply available. You can don't have to live in a slum. You can live in a high rise. So basically that what's creating this is the bonds are becoming due. Right. I mean, it's it's yep. and, and they need to pay up. So the people who own these buildings either need to say, hey, here's the keys. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, that won't happen. <laughs> or they need to. Pay. Well, I'm hearing that too, though. It's like, hey, I just, you know, if I'm not going to make, you know, they're getting ten percent, you know, basically of of what they actually put into it. It's like it's just not worth it here. And then um, Blackstone shows up and says, "I'll take the keys." Hundred percent. Yes, and then I will charge how much rent for each and every. Yeah, uh, we'll Convert it into apartments and, and charge how much rent. Uh, uh, condos. I mean, the Miami condos are having a problem with that down there. I mean, it's, it's yeah. just, people can't afford to live there. Because of the uh, what's the fees, uh, the extra the HOA fees? fees? HOA. Yes, they're getting like I just priced HOA. out of it down more there. than anything in the world. Yeah, uh -huh. right, 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 right. And it's 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 always it, like I said, it's coming down to uh, quote wealthy elites and banks, and somebody's got to have their money. Somebody's got to pay. So <laughs> that's what we're getting is closer and closer to that uh, popcorn and coke and watch uh, the elites battle each other in the ring. Um, that's when it gets. My nice money's on the right. bank. <laughs> exactly. The money. Bank, sla <laughs> bank slash yeah. Fed slash Treasury. They're all a they, team. Can, they can afford to buy it. <laughs> they may not want it, but they can afford to buy it, and they can find someone who will finance it. So uh, we find money, money for for everything. Uh, so, so let's move on to uh, oil. What's going on with oil? It is down to sixty eight and some change now. Um, uh, election. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You've been reading my notes. <laughs> it's exactly what I said. I, the, Times the, the, are good. Keep, Times are good. Look how cheap this gas is. They've been saying for a year or maybe more that it's the China economy and the demand is is not there. Uh, whatever. I mean, it's more to it than just that. Um, and and then they try to say, well, people are going to EVs, so not as much gas is needed. No, that's not it either. Uh, then now the one today. Wait, wait, wait. Let's entertain that. Why not? Why not? Why can't the EV make a dent in, in the price? Because it's not making a dent in sales. There's not enough out there that's happening yet. That's that's going to really make that dent. I mean, um, I've seen I've seen at least seven or eight Tesla trucks here in the city. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How many other types of trucks though? <laughs> <laughs> and how many of how many people made fun of them right. along the way? <laughs> I'll let you guys decide. I saw a bright purple Barney colored. <laughs> Tesla truck, dude. There's like a baby blue hey, one down here. I would take one, and in fact, that sports car looked really hot. I, I would take one of those sports sportsters. Oh, the roadster. Oh, the roadster. Roadster. Yeah. That's it. Sportsters, a Porsche, right? I don't know. You had an extra um, 150 it's grand. Not like I've room. been shopping for them or anything. So <laughs> didn't have my name right. I I, I um, shop for a private jets in my free time too. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> 550. If anyone Cessna, wants to sponsor yeah. us, one oh, one one, one, one big enough for all my friends and family. Hey, we'll put the sponsors thing. on the side of the plane, just like Congress right? have on their coats. Yes, all right. <laughs> just don't put a target on it. Yeah, bought, no. bought by Pips. <laughs> Pip, Pips will be on the tail wing. Yeah, that'd be cool. We should do that. Um, so the other thing they're saying now is just because it's it's seasonal. It's the end of the driving season, so that's just why the demand. End of is the down. driving season, going into the holidays. Oh yeah, yeah that makes uh, sense. Hold on. Uh, the summer <laughs> vacation season, you know, because all the elites took vacations. Uh, I see it on my Facebook timeline. Don't get upset. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, the bottom thing and the last thing I said was it's about elections. I mean, because because in the next debates, they can say, look how far we've brought gas down. We don't forget that you spent the last three and a half, five years, whatever it is uh, with gas prices up to here. We hope yeah. you forget that because look at the price now. <laughs> yep. I, I gonna... filled up uh, three days ago for 238 a gallon. 238 yeah. a gallon. Did you use Kroger? Yeah. Is it the... Yep. No, 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 no. It was a quick, quick, <laughs> oh, okay. or whatever the thing right here in Germantown. That might I be got I'm not sure. That's you got how that I got it. Was... I, don't, I don't believe you. That's how I got it, though. I got that I price too. Picture. <laughs> it was through Kroger, though. It got 30, 30 cents more per gallon down by using yeah. the Kroger card or Kroger oh, yeah. ID, whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> so 268, 270, okay. somewhere around there. Um, the other thing I threw in here real quick, uh, because you guys know I love to throw these things in here. Um, three mega banks had loans outstanding of $1.832 to giant hedge funds as of March 31st. Okay, JP Morgan. Um, these massive loans uh, were given to, as the article said, dodgy giant hedge funds that are regularly found to be on the wrong side of the law and or engaging in wildly risky behavior. And uh, then it goes on to, and it tries to tie these two together, but they, they won't list which, which hedge funds or these are, but then they All go right. on to say, no one their name on that. Hello. <laughs> no, no, no. The prime, then the, the article goes on to say, Oh, by the way, prime broker operations of Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan were each servicing more than a thousand hedge funds as of 2022. They try to tie them together. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying that they threw that in there to let you imply that they're they're part of this 1.832 trillion that they're funding. And, and the, the, the only problem I'm saying with this is it's risky stuff that it's being used. It's stuff that'll come out later that we'll find out later after the impact happens. Uh, that's a lot of money. So <laughs> we'll have to see because if you look at the... I know it's a drop in the bucket, especially drop in the bucket. Rate. Look at our deficit. We're good. I was going there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we can just, I mean, we can give out money here and there. Let's just take care of this too. Um, I mean, and it's not, it's not that it's a drop in the bucket. It's that this exact same or similar, maybe just in different variations has been going on with banks since like 2000, like 98, what was there was a big one in 98, right? Uh, yep. I don't remember the details of that. And then you got Credit Suisse that was doing something very similar, and but they were a smaller outfit and got way over leveraged and they got upside down. And Ortegos <laughs> comes to mind. Right. And they, they bid it. <laughs> but think about how many times, I mean, like, not to throw my own name under the bus, but like JP Morgan has had like five various federal criminal indictments and they've had yep. literally nothing the drop in the bucket is the fine or what's going to happen to these entities if they continue to do this because they're just going to get bailed out or they're just going to get bought out well i'm seeing more and more articles that are admitting that that bank term fund lending program that i mentioned earlier mm -hmm. uh, was the reverse bailout of the banks it basically sent money from there to the banks and then those banks put it into the markets and which which pumped up the 401ks and the pensions. Uh, and so then Janet Yellen got her wish uh, through that way. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm just saying it's my opinion. It's not a fact. But uh, if you if you're good at dot dot to dots, you might do the same. Um, page. I just want to throw out one correlation and people okay. have drawn. Yes, I think a 401k is literally a millennial. It's only 40 years old. It's it's barely it is a it is a millennial. It's true. It's <laughs> Where true. the pension plan, the tried and true, the, the company taking care of the people, that will that's been around for hundreds of years. You get this 401k nonsense out there that also lets, you know, these giant brokerages take advantage, use all their money. And what do you get out of it? You get to basically get maybe maybe retire at 75 if you're lucky if you're lucky yeah you could you can hear them talk about it too the the, the guys that come on to uh, these financial programs and they say yeah they're not going to get wealthy wealthy but you know they're going to have enough to have a nice life to to retire and and just be happy and just be happy <laughs> the, yeah. crumbs. I, 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 the crumbs I, 
I put money on. I bet no millennial or very few millennials are depending on their 401ks to basically for their retirement. Right? Exactly. <laughs> if they haven't already taken the money out. Uh, Beige Book, let's talk about that. That released today. So uh, basically what it said, it, and this is where you, you said something earlier about the soft landing thesis, uh, Royce. Um, no, that was Josh. That was Josh. Okay. Yeah, soft landing. Oh, I heard soft yeah, landing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, which, like I said, at one point, they were trying to we make it no right, landing. Though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this beige book actually came out, and now it's kind of going against the narratives that are trying to be pushed out there. Uh, all before the jobs report on Friday, the economic or uh, unemployment report. Uh, but it said that nine out of 12 districts are showing downturns in economic activity and that economic economic activity overall between all 12 is flat to slightly down. So, again, the narrative that's been pushed has been flipped now from this one report. Or it's like business as usual, which we've heard for the last X amount of years, is the numbers just don't match. The numbers don't, ma don't they don't math, right? <laughs> they don't math. So anything on that, Daniel, anything, any comments on, on that at all? Uh, it's just another report. <laughs> no, nothing. Yeah. Nothing crazy. <laughs> okay. It's kind of new. It'll, it'll be interesting to see what the reaction is. I guess tomorrow through Friday, but again, I think it's just going to be Friday, yeah. but I think we talked about this uh, Royce that major market moves don't usually happen on Friday. Right. I mean, yeah. they don't like to do that. <laughs> Friday black swan. What? No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. Something happened. So oh, yeah. if it does, well, it's to cool way, off would, over the weekend. Right. I would love, <laughs> I would love nothing more than the market to crash. Not this Friday, but next Friday. Oh, do you know why? Actually, that's a possibility. Do you know why? Is it because it's after we get paid? <laughs> no, 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 that, 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 is, that is Friday, but it's the 13th. Ah. Ooh. Okay. Uh, the planners <laughs> might be that devious to do that. I was that expecting this like, to be a little bit more Who high expect high bad luck okay. on Friday the 13th? Look at this market. Oh. <laughs> and, it'll, and it'll go down 66.6%, .6%, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and then it'll go up 420 on the next Monday, so we can all get over it. <laughs> and then down 69. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. We sound like Elon Musk right now. <laughs> Those are his favorites. <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's end this thing, man. Um, let's go to well, not in. Let's go to the crayons because I'm not sure what it is you're going to uh, to tell us today here. Let's let's go to our little after the bell crayons and charts. Right, I don't have to take a look at. It. Now let's move. I to am it. playing with. Costco. Costco. I Costco. love that place. Wholesale because, hey, when you got to buy in bulk, right? You got to buy in bulk. Mr. Bulky. <laughs> and I have uh, my, my one of my newest indicators out here, um, Arbitrage SAR that was added to Atlas 18 Pro. And basically, those are the dots that you see on your screen. The Royce, Star Royce. Smoke. Yes. What does SAR stand for? Stop and reverse. Hmm. And it's stopping, and then you're going to change direction and go the other direction, right? So with Atlas being what Atlas is, it tells us where to take profit. And then basically we see these little red dots start to appear, letting us know that a downtrend is, in fact, starting. And likewise, underneath, basically we see where there's support and there's resistance. I'm talking about Costco this week because one, one of the reasons it's like typically when things start to turn down, one of the indicators that things are slowing is basically people are no longer buying as much or buying in bulk and typically sam's walmart costco uh places like that bargain hunt whatever the, the giant um wholesale bulk places they start to slow down so seeing that basically about five or six days ago costco actually reached this plateau almost 920 and since then it has given back about three to four percent of the of from its all time not all maybe not all time highs but most recent highs. Um, I want to see where this guy is going longer term. Um, one of the things that I basically I'm, I'm trying to look out for, and we're trying to keep an eye out for. I'm going to basically show our support and resistance lines, and I want to see where my daily, my weekly, and all that uh, show up. I'm going to probably have to go to light mode because this is I did this for dark, so I'm going to go light and basically. Oh, hopefully I didn't blind you guys. 
um, those, the black line that you see there, these are all very, very key points um, for um, Costco to hold. And if it can't hold, basically bad things start to happen. So on the daily time frame, we are watching this uh, support line at about 854. That's about, once again, about a 4 or 5% from where we currently are. And if it actually breaks under that, um, we have roughly 783. Looking at our dashboard indicator in order for the buy trend to continue on, looks like it wants to touch that 848 and possibly um, 797. So there should be some type of support around there. So as this, as this um, trend develops, we'll keep an eye out and basically see if we can potentially buy the dip um, on Costco and if basically that, that yield curve is, in fact, inverting and basically going back to normal, maybe you'll be able to uh, pick up some shares of Costco in the very near future. Or maybe they'll split. Who knows? That's all I got for you guys. Yeah, it would definitely have to split several times for me to be able to afford one share. Just get <laughs> with- one. All you need is one. <laughs> you one. Or I'll do what the uh, partial shares that everybody loves to offer. Oh, Robin Hood. Let's all go. Our, exactly. Our favorite. Uh, <laughs> and then they probably count it as one share. Uh, all the partials are counted as one uh, <laughs> each. All right. So <laughs> and, put into, <laughs> and put into tokenization. All right. Let's let's we're not, That's a whole nother show. Um, so let's talk about the winner. If we must. Yeah. Of the hey, first. Go out with we a bang, are, come back with a bang. I'm we are saying. in season two now. <laughs> this is more Temptation remember. Island. No, I mean, uh, season two of <laughs> the wagers that we do. And so we're starting all fresh. Hopefully we will have Daniel more often this this season. And that he he won't just make a, My uh, money's on Daniel. appearance every now and then. So it was back to zero, 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 right? And Royce was the last winner. Yes. So he got to pick. Uh, the stock this week, and, and then, then you guys uh, tried to hamstring me. I, <laughs> but you know, just just be a gracious winner. Yes, this um, karma's a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> so here's your new scoreboard, and as you will see, and I'm showing them the scoreboard, you will see Royce is the only one that has made a mark so far now this season. That means that he won. Uh, we were what was it? Uh, first solar is that what it was? Yeah, first yeah. first solar. Yep. Okay. And uh, I had, well, let's just don't, I mean, I had, yeah, we'll go over it. Daniel had under or over 238. I had 230 to 238, basically. The banker had 222 to 230. And Guru Quaticus, which is what I'm calling him, I had 222 and under. And it ended up, what, uh, I don't know, 215 ish, 16 ish. 40, yeah. So, I mean, I, I gave up on that, didn't even look at it for most of the week after that first move. It would say, well, I'm done. <laughs> Stick yeah. it in. I am done. Um, so let's I got a go. nice alert Friday saying that basically it was time to sell. And I was like, yes. See, the guy puts alerts on it. This oh, specific yeah. wager stock. Uh, Your right. ass got hey, so but It's out. nice to know when it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he said he's going to go undefeated because of his his uh, secret weapon. So we'll have to see. Uh, so what is your stock now for next week? Um Let's go to uh, let's. Oh, okay. That's first solar you have up there now. Are you wanting That's to talk about this now? There right now and rub it in? Is that what you're trying to do? Or what oh, are you yeah. doing here? See, see Why those you dots? Have yeah, that, 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 that first red dot that was Friday afternoon. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, come on, baby. <laughs> so but, you're talking right. about SAR again. All right. Yes, just just S A R. Yes, I'm loving that. Indicator. That made you so feel far. comfortable though that you were going to be right, right? Because of. I'm not what giving point? any information this time. I said which way I thought it was going or it may be going. And then basically I got last. So I learned, you know, <laughs> I learned. You you get to decide who goes first. So we're, we're, we're doing <laughs> Alta this week. Alta. Because if, if it's good enough for Buffett, why not us, right? I was going to say, did he call you and tell you to do this? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm see that proud sponsor? <laughs> remember he's the one that said me. remember he said any stock could go down 50 percent. is that why you're doing this what is it absolutely you see that you see that you see that red uh recycle sign right there right i do i also see a green arrow you see a green arrow you see some red dots and i see earnings 
not too so, long ago. So, so I mean, so it's... which way do you guys think you want to go? I'm gonna let Daniel go first because. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh, not... why you gotta give a channel? I don't know. I don't know. Should I? Should I? This one has a very nice channel because it's Wait. huge, like huge. Give me like um, the thirty and the fifteen minute. Yeah, thirty and fifteen minute. Because you're on arbitrage band, right? Ten dollar range. <coughs> so, yeah. So we're looking. At, you want me to go down to the thirty minute, Josh? Yeah, I just want to look at one of them. All right, let me get rid of um, the, the support lines that I drew on there. <laughs> Homework. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I'm not supposed to see everything I do over here. <laughs> Pay no attention to that. All right. And I'm going to use a bigger band because we're on a smaller time frame. All right. This is the innards, by the way, people that are watching, of Pips. Yep. This is the belly of the beast. All right. So Whoa. you got which one to see over here, Josh? Boy, he's going to like you. Um, no, not quick. really. This one's all over the place. <laughs> Exactly. There's a lot of That's, sideways going on. There's a lot of well, sideways. Give us, give us a top and bottom though. What what's the? Uh, what's the so range? I'm gonna say from about um, three thirty four to about three seventy four. Let's do that. So there's about a fifty dollar range. So it's forty, but that's so that's tens. Everybody yeah. gets a ten dollar range. Every 40, time you yeah, do this, I right. keep trying 40. to change your chart. I'm sorry. <laughs> Every time we do this, I keep trying to change, like, click on your chart and change it. <laughs> no dice. Sorry, sir. <laughs> we are not there. The technology is not there. Oh, we can. Oh, wait. No. Pull up any desk. Point. Pull up any desk. <laughs> oh, wow. Control. There's a ghost. <laughs> no, it's. <laughs> PC right. anywhere. No. You said right. Daniel's first, right? Oh, yeah. Daniel gets first. So give me a 10. A range of so 10. 34, I, want, 44. I want from the current price up, I guess, what, $10 no. again? Okay. No, you're, you're in the middle of a range. You have to be uh, yeah. 34 to 44, 44 to 54, 54 to 64, and 64 to 74. Right. So what's the price right now? It's at 59. Okay, so so he basically, would... he'd be from 54 to 64. Is that what right. you're wanting, Daniel? No, I want like 64 to 70. No, I want 59 to... No, nope. can't have 59. 69. Nope. <laughs> you don't have nice. fours. All off the fours. He just wants 69 there somewhere. So, Because he's a millennial. So, is <laughs> are you going to take 54 to 64? 54 to 64 what, what is or it? 64 to 74? Oh, there are way too many numbers. This is hard for me to follow. <laughs> okay. So, really? Oh, that's why he's an institutional guy. <laughs> i said nothing i said nothing he's like just just let the algorithm decide it for me i don't want to decide it <laughs> no he has to call his buddies and say buy this now guys buy this yeah. oh, whatever the first upper range is the first upper range so that's 64 to 74 well 64 and up basically so. yeah yeah all right well no no that's the top of the range right oh yes, yes. that's the top of the range no, no, I want whatever the first range is from uh, the current price. So what we've been saying for 10 minutes is 54 <laughs> to 64. Yeah, 54 to 64. <laughs> sure, yeah. I'll do that. No, but the, I mean, that's the middle range. That's not what I'm trying to say. But no, no, no. so <laughs> like the, the, under that, um, under that, uh, uh, Daniel, we would have 44 to basically 54 to 44 and then 44 to 34. Yep. They said it was at 59, though. Yeah, I know, but that's in the middle of a range. <laughs> oh, I guess my my point is, why wouldn't you just start where the price is and then it's split into quarters after, right? It's his game. It's his rules. Hey, all I'm doing is going by probability. See, this is so why he's only one. For everyone to get the same amount, you have to basically split it evenly across what the pro what's the problem. That's fine. I'll take the middle range. Well, the there middle, two now, in the middle, two middles. Uh, the one, the one, the one I already agreed to. The one I already agreed. All right, to. fifty-four to sixty-four. All right, right. that's where he's at. Confirmation. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Who do you have next? <laughs> All right, I'm going to take the one right above his. So I'm going to take sixty-four up. Sixty-four plus. All right, since I had the uh, the, the the next least amount of wins. 
<laughs> Actually, it's your what? choice. It's your choice, though, Royce. All right, Josh. Yes, this is revenge. Man. Josh. <laughs> well, you already you already took my range, so um, mine too. By the way. <laughs> I mean, there's no way. I guess let's I'll take. Up. I guess I'll take right under Daniel's range. So I mean, it's 54 to 44, 44 to 54. Yeah. Yeah. And I got 44, 44 and below. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I don't love it, but it's fine. Hey, when you win next week, you remember you thank me. You thank me. <laughs> hey, all all we need is a macro event, and the, and the Apes will win. Because <laughs> if the market crashes, <laughs> it, it'll oh, yeah. take everything down with it. So <laughs> you got to take the upper range, then, right? Oh yeah, I took the the, the higher range. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'll get let's get us back to our our little smiling faces, so we can all say bye bye and see you next week. Uh, see you guys. You guys can wave bye, or you can do the peace sign like a cool millennial would. All right. Yes.